lone star. You're the girl. And you play it coy, but it's kinda cute. Oh, when you smile at me, you know exactly what you do. Baby, don't pretend that you don't know it's true. Cause you can see it when I look at you. And in this crazy And I get to kiss you, baby, just because I can Whatever comes our way, we'll see it through And you know, that's what I love can do And in this crazy world, you're everything channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review this pen community keeps on amazing and astounding me by the generosity of the people who share their love of this hobby today's pen is a case in point this is the Conklin Nozak in Toledo red it was sent to me on loan for review by pen friend and subscriber Sean Marshall Sean was the lucky winner of one of my pen giveaways and won a Caveco Sport which was in turn part of a gift of a number of pens from James Times of England. Thank you, Sean, for the loan of this fascinating fountain pen. So let's take a look at this pen and its delicious looking Italian acrylic right now. <music> And last but not least, we have a package from a friend of mine in Edmonton, Alberta, who is also a viewer. And let's see what Sean has sent me. Woo! This is a Conklin Nozak. Look at that. Wow, that's a beauty. That's a heavy pen, too. But that finish is very interesting made in Italy it's not numbered that just says made in Italy Conklin Toledo USA it's a medium metal section that's that one is a magnetic cap there we go this is the first Conklin Nozak I've ever held okay just like the Visconti that ends up being a bit of a uh, a fidget spinner for you if you like that kind of thing but we will do a full review on this thank you very much very generous of you Sean Sean was kind enough to let me have carte blanche with this pen and do whatever was necessary to make it write well that was really kind of him to place that kind of blind trust in my nib tuning abilities but I have to reiterate that I'm no expert at all and at most a talented amateur when it comes to nib smoothing or nib tuning i've been writing with this pen since i received it from sean on august 20th today is september 8th so that's about two and a half weeks it has some very interesting quirks as well as some fascinating features let's take an overall look at this pen what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons and some measurements and provide a writing sample after the writing sample stay tuned as I will discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen overall this is a beautiful Italian resin pen in the color Toledo red I'm not sure that the Toledo is referencing Spain or Toledo Ohio the home office of Conklin 
Pelican had some limited edition pens in uh, Toledo Red as well. So I'm going to assume here that we're talking about Toledo, Spain. If I'm incorrect, I'm sure someone will correct me. That's correct, Alex. This pen is made in Italy, as we can see engraved on one of the facets of this octagonal shaped pen. The Gold Spot Pens website says this about the Conklin Nozak. Conklin released the original Conklin Nozak, no sack, in 1931. It took the world by storm with their patented piston filler. This model is based on the original, having a polygonal design, made from European grade acrylic resin. This pen is hand polished to perfection and displays a variety of color. It says it's a handmade resin in Toledo Red. The cap is magnetized. The trim is highly polished chrome. The nib is two-tone steel. The filling system is piston, of course, and the warranty is lifetime. We will see that that warranty came in handy too. People might assume from this advertising boilerplate that Conklin invented the piston filling mechanism in 1931. But they were wrong then, weren't they? But they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? Actually, Pelican made the first piston filler in Germany in 1929, the Pelican 100. I don't think either Pelican or Conklin were able to hold on to their respective inventions as every major pen manufacturer made a piston filler of some sort or another through the decades until the Chinese really upset people by making them for five bucks. The pen is rather hefty and when I first held it, I assumed, wrongly, it was a metal pen with an acrylic covering. But the cap and the barrel are solid acrylic with the end finials and section comprising most of the weight of the pen. The octagonal shape and incredible resin make this pen a real beauty to look at. Conklin's website photos of this pen really suck and don't portray any of the warmth and nuance that you see in this exquisite resin. Look at these colors and swirls, not just reds, but golds and purples and blues. And some of those golds are really sparkly and seem to be shot through the entire design. The cap finial is a large flat cylinder which butts up against the octagonal shaped cap resin and causes these ridges right here to stand out. You can actually feel that right there on those edges. Interesting choice. Perhaps making the finial an octagonal flat-topped metal piece was too much engineering? I don't know. The clip is on a spring-loaded pivot, which allows you to grip the pen with one hand and clip it to your pocket like a clothespin. It's very sturdy and easy to use, with a ball end that won't snag clothes. Very clever. Conklin is stamped or engraved on the clip, the cap is straight until we get to the end where it is tapered down to the barrel. It gives the look of a pencil that has been in a sharpener. I like it. The barrel tapers up in the same pencil sharpener fashion and the eight sided faceted barrel tapers away until another smooth taper ends in a concave tapered metal end finial which is also the piston knob. I can't help but think that this pen was made by some kind of design committee. The body committee insisted that the cap meet their elegant barrel in the same tapered fashion. Or it could be that the designer was paid by the hour or the millimeter and started from the bottom up. Either way, it still makes no sense why the attention to detail and design ergonomics stopped when they got to the cap finial. I don't get it. But I'm a designer and have a lifetime career of running up against engineers or accountants that get the last say with statements like, just cut that end off straight and we'll save a bundle. I digress here a bit, but there's a classic, perhaps apocryphal story of the design of the Shaw Festival Theatre in Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario, Canada. I began my theatre career there when the stage was brand new in 1974 as a stage lighting technician. The story goes that the celebrated Canadian architect Ronald Tom 
was presenting the theater's design to one of the principal donors and the donor asked what that thing was sticking out of the top of the building the architect explained the function and need for the fly gallery which rises at least 100 feet into the air and is where the scenery and lighting is lowered and retracted to allow the theater to function as a theater the donor complained well i don't like it get rid of it fortunately saner heads prevailed and the theater is one of the best stages in the world i was lucky enough to design there once all of that explains why crap like this really burns my bum the cap is held on magnetically much like a visconti and ends up being a really cool fidget spinner for those so inclined and we see a tapered chrome metal very slippery fingerprint magnet as well as the magnetic section that ends with a small step before we see this gorgeous two-toned number six size steel nib with its characteristic crescent moon shaped breather hole conklin in gold and toledo usa and there on the shoulder is the m for medium and there is the plastic feed while we are close up on this nib i want to draw your attention to the tipping material and how the nib slip was cut because i think this might have some bearing on how the pen writes if i can't get close enough here i'll drop in a uh, photo it, the tipping material is kind of lopsided so when the slip was cut right down the center we get a lot of tipping material on one side and very little on the other side again I'm no expert but I find the way this pen writes is as wonky as that looks to me more on this when we get to the writing sample the nib and feed are in a collar assembly that unscrews and you can just see the piston mechanism on the inside from the section and here you can see that magnetic ring which actually is removable from the nib and feed assembly so that you can swap nibs and the section is permanently affixed to the barrel the piston mechanism works very smoothly but because the barrel is opaque there's no way to find out how much ink you load into the pen or how much is remaining as there's no ink window if we inspect the inside of the cap we'll see that there's a a metal cap sleeve in there uh, which is the metal part that the magnet ring on the end of the section attaches to when you cap the pen i assume it also works as a cap seal after filling the pen i unscrewed the nib and feed collar and siphoned up the ink with a syringe the piston chamber appears to be very narrow perhaps 2 to 2.5 millimeters in diameter and holds approximately 0.8 milliliters of ink it might have more capacity than that but that was all i was able to siphon up in filling and i did the piston operation twice to ensure a complete fill the cap posts securely but the weight of that cap back weights the pen and i tend to write with this pen unposted unposted the pen feels very comfortable in the hand but that section is very slick and cool to the touch plus the design team loses another fight to the bean counters here as well i'm afraid this acrylic edge of the barrel is very sharp and you can feel it my action my finger actually catches that edge when you move your thumb back and forth on that section you can feel that edge just one single swipe with a buffing wheel would take that edge off probably one too many operations on the Italian assembly line for the price point speaking of price point this pen currently retails for $89.95 US on the gold spot website but Sean informs me that he purchased the pen in the fall of 2019 from Goulet pens for $70 US this is not that pen however as this is the replacement he received from Yaffa brands for what Sean calls piston issues on the first one I assume Sean still has the first one that might be a good thing as he could swap out this nib for the old one buy enough of these Conklins and you'll eventually have a complete working pen 
Oh, snap. I say that after having my own Conklin issue with my Durograph and two Conklin nibs, both of which were not made by Schmidt, but were certainly pieces of Schmidt. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Conklin Nozak with a Conklin Durograph, a Visconti Van Gogh, a Visconti Rembrandt, and a Lamy Safari. Let's look at them posted. And here are the pens posted. The Lamy Safari here is for scale only, as it has nothing in common with these others. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Conklin Nozak Toledo Red, and it is a medium steel nib. And the ink today is Robert Oster, Muddy Dragon. Here's your tome of dragon spells and lore. That'll have everything you need. Enjoy your dragon. Okay, dragon, here's the house rule. Rule one, you are now scooper of your own poops, or I will take you down like the black light poster you are. Let's check the wetness. It's not what I would call a wet pen, but the wetness varies, as you can see, depending on the angle that you put the nib at, and that might have something to do with the misshapen nib here. And here is the swatch card for the Muddy Dragon alongside Robert Oster Astrakiza Rot and Dimene Ancient Copper. And as to line variation, that is no pressure. It's giving me a fairly medium line. A little bit thinner on the horizontal strokes. And a little bit of pressure. Again, it's a steel nib. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of it. Into our writing sample. To have neither puts everyone into a spin, I would think. And as to reverse writing. That's very interesting. It's very thin and very dry, but it's a lot smoother than regular writing. And some quick writing. I want to draw your attention, pardon the pun, to some of these skips here. That's not me missing the page. That's not me missing the page. There's another skip over here somewhere. But you can see that it gets thick and thin and thick and then disappears. And that's not a function of the feed because the feed tends to keep up okay. It's just now and then, like back up here, I get a skip. And I think that's because of the inconsistent line it's making because of that very lopsided nib uh, tipping material that's on that nib. I have to say up front that I have put this nib to some micro mesh to try to make it write better, but I'm uncomfortable with this misshapen tip. I don't know if smoothing would improve it or whether it needs to be ground differently to compensate for that off-center tip. The pen is inconsistent. The line seems to go randomly from thick to thin and then gets blotchy and then skips and then hard starts. 
So I'm going to recommend Sean replace this nib on this pen. Hopefully he has the other one so he can just swap it out and be easy. So what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? Well, first, this is a wonderful looking pen. The faceted body and the exquisite acrylic resin in wonderful swirls, marvelous color, make it a real eye catcher. Uh, the magnetic cap and the clothespin clip are really cool, convenient features, as is the piston filling mechanism. Unfortunately, the negatives outweigh the positives with this pen for me. Your mileage may vary, of course, but I find the slick metal section here a deal breaker. If the section were made of this same acrylic resin, that would raise this pen in my estimation significantly. The metal section is not there for the magnetic cap as the magnet is part of the nib assembly or slips on to that nib assembly as we saw. The nib is yet another disappointment from Conklin. I've not written with one that was good yet. It's only three, I admit, but three strikes and I'm not looking fondly on the brand, especially at these price points. The ink capacity is a bit disappointing as well. For a piston filler, you'd expect a little more capacity than a cartridge. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.